All right, and now for this third one, we have that on the 1st of January of 2022, Mina deposited a thousand into a bank with an annual interest rate of 4% compounded monthly. At the end of January, at the end of every month after that, she deposits a hundred dollars into the same account. And for part A, we need to calculate the amount of money in her account at the start of 2024. Give her answer to two decimal places. All right, you guys. So this is clearly a finance problem. Okay. And you in pretty much all of the tests I've seen lately, you have at least one of these per test. Okay. And so for the finance problem, you have two main tools. Okay. You have in your formula booklet. Okay. Formula booklet. You have this formula that you can use. And also in your calculator, you have the finance app. Okay. Now I need you guys to have the following intuition. See, whenever you have something where she deposits a hundred into the same account, every such and such amount of time, you're going to be using the finance app. Okay. If that is not the case. Okay. If you have like, for example, if the exercise was this, if the exercise was just this, then you would be just fine using the formula booklet. Okay. And that is something that I need you guys to understand right off the bat, because even if we use the finance app, it uses part of the form formula booklet just with this added thing. And it's important to understand like what it's doing. Okay. Anyways, in the formula booklet, it's important to get familiar with it because the day of the test, you're going to be walking with the formula booklet, the calculator, your pen and pencil, like, 30 minutes of sleep and your energy to do well. And so part of what your formula booklet has, okay, important to be familiar with it because it's a tool the day of the test is this thing called compound interest. Okay. Which is exactly what's happening here. See, so compound interest, see how here we're calculating the amount of money in her account at the start of 2024. Well, what is the date where she deposited her money? January, 2022. And so there's a bunch of money she got in between those two periods of time. Okay. Through what? Through interest. Uh, okay. So there's this compound interest formula to help us see how much more money she has earned. Okay. How much money she has earned because of the bank, you know, whatever. Okay. So here's my compound interest formula. So as you can see, it has five components. Okay. And for these exercises, if you can fill in all five, just use this. Okay. So FV is future value. PV is present value. N is the number of years. K is the number of compounding periods per year. And R is the nominal annual interest rate. See, now we're going to be able to find almost all these things, except for the fact that she deposits a hundred dollars into the same account. See, but it's still important to look at it from the perspective of formal booklet because it helps you define FV, PV, and all that stuff. Okay. So, 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 so point is future value, the money sh she's going to have in the future. See, is that something I have? So FV is actually what I'm missing. See, we need to calculate the amount of money in her account at the start of 2024. We need to calculate her future money. Okay. PV is the present value. So present value, what did she deposit initially? She deposited a thousand. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. N is the number of years. Okay. So, or better said, okay. In the context for the finance app, it's not exactly number of years. It's more like the amount of periods. Okay. So because we have this thing that is monthly, Okay. How many months is it from January 1st, 2022 until January, 2024? Well, it's two years. How many months does a year have? 12. So two times 12 is going to give you 24. Okay. So N, which I know the formal booklet says years, but in this case, we're going to be working because of the finance app. Okay. We're going to, N is going to be like amount of periods N is going to be 24. Okay. You have 24 months between 2022 and 2024. All right, cool. What else do we have here? We have K is the number of compounding periods. So this is going to be relevant. It's not exactly what we're going to put into the finance app, but because it's monthly, how many months do we have in a year? 12. Okay. 
And last but not least, we have, it asks for the nominal annual interest rate. We have R, so R percent. They tell us that it's 4% compounded monthly, you see? So right now we are from the perspective of the formula booklet and we're gonna bring it to the finance app in the calculator, okay? I just think it's more intuitive to approach it that way, okay? To each their own, but whatever. So we need to calculate FV knowing this information and the fact that she deposits $100 every month. Deposits, <laughs> deposits, deposits, and the fact that she deposits $100 every month. So, let's see how my calculator is going to help me with that. So, as I said, we need to use the finance app. And so, of course, we click this purple button that says apps and go to finance. Okay, some calculators have a little bit different. This is the one we're going to be using ourselves. So here we have this thing called TBM Solver. Now, I, already, I was already playing around with it a little bit earlier for this exercise. But, oops. Well, let's just imagine we have everything like just sort of empty, okay? Yeah. So as I said, M is the amount of periods, see? And so because from January 2022 to the start of 2024, we have 24 months. And we're talking about months, and it's going to be 24, okay? I, as you see, is in percent. That's going to be the interest rate that we're working with. In this case, it's going to be 4%. So I'm just going to put 4. PV, present value, 1,000, okay? And here is something important that we have to keep in mind, you guys, okay? The symbol for PV, like positive or negative, and the symbol for PMT has to be the same, all right? Just stick with that intuition, see? It makes a little more sense if I say negative 1,000 and negative 100. Now, PV, as I said, is the money she invests initially, okay? And PMT is this thing down here. If she deposits $100 every month, your PMT is going to be 100, okay? That is intuition for PMT. All right. So, why would it be negative? It's negative because from the perspective of Mina, how much money did she lose initially? Well, she lost a thousand because it's what she deposited. She's going to get a lot more later, right? But it's what she lost initially. So negative a thousand, negative a hundred. FV is actually what we're looking for. So we're just going to leave it empty. And PY and CY, just stick to the idea that it has to do with whether it's yearly or monthly or whatever for the annual for the interest rate that is compounded see so keyword here see how it says compounded monthly right there so if it's compounded monthly it's how many periods ah it's gonna be 12 so because it's all for p over y we're gonna put 12 and c over y we're gonna put 12 as well okay so this has to do with the fact that it gets compounded monthly 12 times see um, that is the number of your compounding periods. Compounded monthly, you put 12. See? If it would say compounded bi-monthly, you would put 6 because you have 6 bi-months per year. See? Anyways, as you can see, if you change one, the other one changes according to it. So if you put PY is 12, CY changes immediately. See? That's fine. We have everything written down. Now we just need to put your FV. Okay? Also, for PMT, I'm going to work with END. You can do it with begin, but just stick to one version, okay? Like whatever floats your boat, stick to it. I'm going to stick with end. That's how I'm going to do it, whatever. So as you can see, I have everything except FV. And so the way to find out what FV is, is using this thing called solve, okay? So you see how this enter button in green has solve? So whenever you want to press the green button, well, you press your green button here, alpha, and enter, and that lets you hit solve. So if I press solve over FV, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna take all these other values and find what FV is. Okay, intuitively, you can say like, ah, so it's filling in this guy, it's filling in this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and the PMT, and it's gonna give you FV. So if you solve for FV, 
and plugs in everything else and finds what FV is for you. Okay, this is especially useful when, let's say, you're trying to find something that is on an exponent like n. See, getting n alone is super hard, so the solver works great. Okay, whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and, as I said, press alpha, enter for solve, kapow. It gives you that value there. That is the answer for part A, actually. So for part A, you're gonna go ahead and put that the answer is 3.577, comma 43. Ah, well, FV, see? And dollars equals this guy here. That is for part A. Again, very straightforward, very quick. I just did a lot of explaining because some of you probably didn't know what PMT was. Maybe you didn't know why it was negative up here. It's from the perspective of Mina. Okay, so from the perspective of Mina, she lost $1,000 initially. She's losing $100 every month, okay? You can do it in the version where they're both positive, okay, and do the solver here, and you're going to see that you get the same value, but it's negative, okay? And so then you would have to flip the perspective. You see, it would be like, I don't know, perspective of the bank or some shit like that. Okay, whatever. For me, it's a lot more sense if I make it from Mina's perspective. She loses $1,000 initially. She loses $100 per month. So that means that my future value, what I earn, is going to be that amount. Okay? Whatever. That is part A. For part B, we need to find how many complete months from, from the 1st of January it will take for Mina to have more than $5,000 in her, her account. See? So, in other words, what's happening now is that because we need to see how many more complete months, how many more complete months is which variable? Is it PV? Is it M? Is it FV? Is it K? Remember that N is like the amount of time, okay? And in the formula book, it, N tends to be in years, yes. But in your finance app calculator, N is whatever you're working with. So in this case, we had months, so we put N equals 24. In this case, because we need to find how many complete months, this is now what we're trying to find. So this is now X. And because they tell us that it has to be having more than $5,000 in, in her account, it's whenever FV passes 5,000. Okay? Whenever FV passes 5,000. So if I go into my calculator, I'm going to put FV as 5,000. And N is actually what we're trying to solve. See? So now everything else stays the same. All I changed was FV and N. I'm going to use solver for... La 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 la. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to use the solver for N to find how many complete months. So alpha, enter for solve. There it is. See? So for part B, you would put 36.4689. Oh, shit. 30, 36.46869. God, why does that look so nasty? 36.4689, okay? So this is the amount of months, right? Now, because of the context of the problem, okay, you can't work with half a month, okay? Why? Because, and here's a big hint, da -da -da -da, it says, boom, it says complete months, okay? So you can't work with half a month. So... Basically, what the exercise is telling you is like, okay, after how many months does she have more than 5,000? Okay, not half a month, not half a week. After how many months are you sure she has at least over 5,000? And so because it's at 36 and a half, if you say 36, you're actually going to end up with a little bit less than 5,000. See, in fact, if I put 36 here and I use a solver for FV, we're going to see that I'm a little bit below 5,000, see? And so the moment that you put 37 for your amount of months and you solve her down here, now you're over 5,000, see? So you're going to pick 36 or 37. 36 is not enough, so it has to be 37. When is it enough? When it passes 5,000, okay? That is for part B, ladies and gentlemen. And number three is not that hard. But you do have to know what the hell is going on with the calculator, see? So again, the biggest intuition I can share is that PV and PMT share their symbol. Share the symbol, okay? I suggest putting it in negative because it's from the perspective of the person investing. So, she loses, Mina lost $1,000 
because it's what she invested initially and she loses a hundred dollars per month so that's why it makes sense to put negative a hundred i mean negative a thousand and negative a hundred for both see Re regardless of the way you approach make sure they share the symbol okay the second thing i can say is that pmt is for the monthly additional okay it's for the monthly additional all right the other thing i that i think is important is that n although the formal booklet says it in numbers of years for the finance app is just like the number of periods okay so if you're working with months you would have 24 periods okay for part a for part b it ended up being 36 37 months so n was 37. if you have those two things in mind it's fairly straightforward you guys it's not that hard and you just got to know what the calculator how it works, what it asks for, and stuff like that. So I hope this exercise assisted you in that, cierto? Regardless, I wish you the best, and that is number three.